Good afternoon. Well, uh, Mr. President, um, it meant a lot to everyone here um, that you brought pizza uh, for them. I, <laughs> I, um, I haven't delivered pizza since 1979, uh, working my way through college, but it, it meant a lot. And I just want everybody here to know uh, that I had the honor of uh, being present when uh, the president called each of the governors uh, yesterday and spoke to the American people uh, about the federal government's response and partnership with state and local authorities in addressing the disasters that have, uh, have hit our country all too often with all too much gravity, uh, given the impacts of climate change. And the governors were incredibly appreciative uh, of uh, the response of the federal government uh, and our president championed all of the work that you uh, do each and every day and the work uh, that is being done out in the field. And uh, it is my uh, privilege to introduce our greatest uh, champion, the President of the United States. Thank you very much, Thank Mr. You. President. I don't know why I'm paying attention to this, you guys up here, so everybody, all kidding aside, my, my mother would say, I apologize for my back. I apologize. <laughs> but folks, uh, look, uh, yesterday uh, I convened the entire cabinet for a long meeting uh, to make sure that we had a whole of government response. Every single cabinet agency has some contribution they can make and some responsibility. And uh, I'm here at FEMA today. Uh, just a few minutes ago, uh, I received a call from your administrator and uh, uh, Chris Will, and, uh, who's in Florida, and uh, helping them recover, at least doing the initial assessment of uh, that Category 3 storm that uh, made landfill. And this morning, I spoke again. We're, it seems like we should be on direct dial, the two of us, uh, Governor DeSantis and I. We spoke again. This morning, I let him know that I approved his major disaster declaration. And I also um, spoke with uh, Governor McMasters and, uh, uh, and with the uh, for South Carolina's emergency declaration as well. And, uh, and I spoke the day before to the governors of not just Florida and South Carolina, but of North Carolina as well as Georgia. And uh, look, uh, it means we're making available federal assistance for Florida survivors whose homes are damaged or destroyed by the declaration that I agreed to. And we're helping both Florida and South Carolina with the delivery of meals, waters, and uh, debris removal that's going to help both states begin their road to recovery and do it immediately. But before we do anything, I'm here to thank all of you. And I really mean this. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You are making an incredible contribution. I mean, it's, it's I don't think, I hope the American people have a sense of, and it's hard to understand it because, you know, we usually don't, we're, we're not this engaged this often. But this last couple of years with climate change and really kicking in, uh, you guys are going 24 hours a day and 365 days a year. And it seems to just keep piling up. And I, I, I mean it sincerely. I admire, I admire what you do. I've been in almost every one of the areas you're talking about that you've had to deal with. And your sister organ, the brothers and sister organizations from the Coast Guard, the military, I mean, across the board. It's amazing the sacrifices, and I might add risks, risks your folks are taking out in the field. And so thank you, thank you, thank you. It's important the American people understand it because we're in a situation where, you know, uh, we're, uh, uh, how can I say it? There's still some deniers out there in terms of uh, whether or not climate change has anything to do with any of this. And uh, we're going to need a whole hell of a lot more money to deal with emergency appropriations, to deal with all you're taking care of. And on behalf of the country, I want to deliver a heartfelt thanks of to the emergency personnel in our communities all across the federal government, including right here, all of you in front of me, FEMA's National Response Coordination Center, and, uh, and those out on Maui. Uh, you know, you've, it's just amazing. You've seen it. Some of you have been there. It's just pure devastation. That whole part of the island is just leveled. There's nothing left.
And uh, before this week's storm, we, uh, we pre-deployed uh, 1,500 federal personnel and Coast Guard throughout the southeast. Federal search and rescue teams have been helping people whose homes have been uh, surrounded and inundated by water. And FEMA and the Small Business Administration are on the ground to help residents whose homes and businesses have been destroyed or damaged. And I want to, again, thank you all. It really, really, really matters. And one more thing. Every American expects FEMA will show up. And when they're in the middle of a disaster, and I'm calling on Congress to make sure you're able and have the funds to be able to continue to show up and meet the needs of the American people to deal with immediate crises that we're facing right now, as well as the long-term commitments that we have to make to finish the job in Maui and elsewhere. Showing up for the moment to save the lives is critically important, but that's just the beginning. Just the beginning. And some of this is going to take months and years to make sure we restore the, the people to the circumstances there were before this disaster hit. And uh, as I said, you know, and to the people of Florida and throughout the Southeast, uh, I'm here to make clear that our nation has your back and we are not going to, we're, we're not going to walk away. We're not going to give up. We're not going to slow down. And again, you know, we, uh, we, we're in a situation where how can I say it? Some of my colleagues, my former colleagues in the Senate and people I work with every day in, in the United States Senate, think that this disaster relief money we're asking to continue to finish the job so far and have enough money to continue to work to save the American people, their lives, their homes, their well-being, is somehow uh, I don't know, uh, not needed, or I'm not even sure what, what they're thinking is. But we need this money done. We need this disaster relief request met. We need to do it in September. We can't wait. But uh, I'll take a few questions from the press if you have any right now, but then I'm going to go talk to these folks. Do you have any comment on Overdose Awareness Day? Yes. Uh, look, um, I've been dealing with uh, drug epidemic in America since I was a chairman of the Judiciary Committee when I was a U.S. Senator. And uh, it has, uh, in many cases, gotten much worse because of the nature of the drugs that are being consumed. And fentanyl is a new and really, really dangerous addition. More people, more young people, no, not just young people, are being dying as a consequence of ingesting fentanyl. Sometimes not even knowing it's in the drug they're taking. Uh, and uh, and one of the other things I'm, I've been asking the Congress for, it was need about $15 billion along the border to be able to deal with the technology needed to be able to determine whether or not this, these precursor drugs are making it into, into Mexico or into the United States and dealing with that. So there's more to do there as well. Mr. President, are you Leader concerned McConnell? about a government shutdown and how that affects the work that's being done here at the it would be a serious, serious problem. I, uh, I'm hoping that uh, there's greater maturity uh, to prevent that from happening than some think. Have you spoken to Leader McConnell? Yes, I have. I spoke to Mitch. He's a friend, uh, um, and I, uh, I, I spoke to him uh, uh, today. Uh, and uh, you know, uh, he was his old self on the telephone, uh, and uh, having um, a little understanding of. Uh, dealing with uh, neurosurgeons and people, and one of the leading women in my staff, her husband's a neurosurgeon as well. It's not un at all unusual to have the response that sometimes happens to Mitch when you've had a severe concussion. It's part of, a, it's part of the recovery. And so I'm confident he's going to be back to his old self. Do you have any concerns about his ability to do his job? Do you have any concerns about his ability? I don't. You, you want to talk to me about to Congress. Oh, do, do, do you want, do you want, <laughs> let's talk about why I'm here. Are you expecting President Chi to attend the G20 summit? The answer is I hope he attends the G20 summit. Thank you. All right. Thank you. All right. I am going to Florida. I am going to, I'm going to Florida uh, Saturday morning. 